Giordano could be simply described as a tech executive, but Peter Giordano is not exactly simple. He's covered the gamut from startup to global, from co-founding a company to working with one of the world's largest software companies, and he did it all in his own unique way. During his recently wrapped 10-year stint at VMware, he held more than nine roles, only two of which had an actual job description. He created the other seven by laying out his own career path, then seeking that point where company priorities intersected with his own. His constant focus, people. He's always seen himself as a coach and has always been that guy that successfully mentors key people to get where they want and need to be in their life and career. Peter recently reignited his creative side with photography, which is how we initially met. What I noticed right off the bat was that every single time we talked, pearls of business, career, and manifesting wisdom spilled from his mouth as effortlessly as breathing. So you know what that meant. He had to be on the chat. Currently taking a well-earned sabbatical to spend time with his beautiful family, explore his love of photography, and advise a few startups, Peter could not have been more welcoming and open to sharing some tips and perspectives with us here on The Chat. Well, hello everybody. It's Karen Hutton and The Chat with Karen Hutton. I am here today with tech exec Peter Giordano on his fabulous deck. He's gonna share some things with us that might just change your life. So hang on to your hats and we're gonna dig in right now. So Peter, awesome, awesome Peter. <laughs> you have had, you have a tech career, you're a tech executive, but you have a very unconventional, you've had a rather unconventional sure. path within that. And the thing that fascinates me is that you have come up with this really powerful, simple way to, to look at how to put together your plan if you're someone who is either considering a change, career change, or you're at a sure. fork in the road, or should I go this way or that way, and how do you how do you decide whether it's the right kind of opportunity for you, and so on and so forth. Sure. So. Well, that's very flattering, thanks. Well, it's very <laughs> true, it's very true. Well, um, yeah, in terms of unconventional, uh -huh. um, with background in engineering and, and went into everything from co-founding a small startup yep. to working in large global enterprises and then working in almost every role in a software company from development to support and everything in between. <laughs> and through that, getting yep. to work with the best people on the planet and having the fortune of being a member of their team and working with them, either counseling them, man managing, mentoring, or receiving mm -hmm. that management and mentoring. And again, I feel very lucky to have, have, have had all that. Um, and so, yeah, I've had a lot of opportunity to talk with people about career. And I think one of the most important things to do first right. is to focus, whenever you have this option, when life gives you the, the opportunity to actually think about this, right? right. Um, I think it's important to take a step back and then evaluate your own core values. And I think you know, one thing I've said in the past is, if you know your values, you'll know your value. I love and, that. <laughs> and so getting in touch with your values, and some of my values are integrity, innovation, passion. Um, and so the more you can really focus on those, and then think about your life in terms of just a couple dimensions, mm -hmm. a few dimensions that are most important to you. For me, it's family and my friends it's my health it's um, and then maybe career yeah <laughs> and, and then of course community and things like that uh -huh. pick two or three or four of those dimensions and then think about who am I now what's the best present self that I can be uh -huh. and then if I were to go out two four eight years uh -huh. and look back how would future Pete look back at present Pete mm -hmm. am I on that right path right okay. so come up with some goals like for me Part of my health dimension was, I just want to get more sleep. And something that's more actionable is, I'm just going to go to bed at 10 o'clock. Now, that may be reasonable for some, it may be completely unreasonable for, others, for, for somebody else. Uh -huh. You just have to do things that work for you. Right. Like, there's no golden fix for that. The important thing is to get the dimension and then what the goal is. Then from there, once you've been centered on that and you understand your values and what dimensions are important, I think the next step is to really pull together three very critical areas. The first is skills. The second is passion or the things you're most interested in. And last is market or 
what are you actually going to get paid to do? Mm -hmm. Now, and, a lot of people do it the other way. They go, mm -hmm. well, what, where can I make money? But And yeah. I, think, I think so I drew up a little circle here, and yeah. I cannot take credit for the circle. I've seen a lot of different you know, self-help and all these other kind of management tomes talk about these three circles. There's nothing special about these three circles, but I think the intersections are important, mm -hmm. or the adjacencies, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, here, between things that are super interesting to you, mm -hmm. your passion, and skills, the things that you're actually really good at, and you have to be honest with yourself in every one of these categories. Yeah. The adjacency here, what's intersecting, I call that flow, right? You've heard it before with athletes, but this is when you experience timeless energy, right? Ener uh, time passes mm -hmm. without you knowing. You could sit doing this item yeah. or task for hours, hours and it seems like minutes. Yep, I've right? had that happen. You don't expend energy, it creates energy. Okay? Over here, I think when you have something that's super interesting and somebody will pay you to do it, well, those are your desires, right? That's like, if I could train dolphins all day and get paid for it, I would love it. If I could surf all yeah. day and get paid yeah. for it, it'd be great, right? But those are really desires, and it's elusive, and it's it's a little bit of a wild goose because they're very fleeting. Right? And down here, where skills meet market, uh -huh. those are opportunities. That some people are going to pay you to do something, but it may not be something you're interested in, right? Yeah. You may be really good at just knocking down brick walls all day long, <laughs> and somebody will pay you to do it. Yeah. But it may not be that interesting. To right. You. So the magic happens as you start to move closer to the center, mm -hmm. right? You, you find ways to pull toward the center. And mm -hmm. I think the conversations you and I have had have yeah. been great. And I actually updated this model and I put your tagline in the I middle, which that. is when you are able to get the right amount of overlap, and that's important, it's not the same for everybody, but the right amount of overlap between your skills, your passions, and the market opportunities, yeah then you're able to live your life as an art and it's different for every single person and so you need to start asking yourself questions um, about each of these areas and so this is this is the simple model and i would start here uh -huh. with many of the people that i worked with and mentored in my career and i've ha i've used this model you know myself so what what would you tell someone who all right say they well love photography I mm -hmm. loved uh, photography, I love to process yep. photos, I, uh, what else is on there, let's see <laughs> this thing. And, and I have a passion for talking to people about it. I don't know, I'm making that up. Yeah, well, I think, you know, then I put my product marketing hat on, right? I yeah. start thinking like my marketing hat and I start to wonder, okay, that's interesting, mm -hmm. but that's not a career. That, that might create a career opportunity. So you have to explore that a little bit. And so in that, I would start asking questions like, okay, um, what is the thing that you're gonna create? Mm -hmm. right? Are you gonna create a piece of art that you want to then bring to a gallery and talk to people there at the gallery? Or right. do you wanna create something and share it on a social network, mm -hmm. like Google Plus, mm -hmm. and engage people there? Mm -hmm. Because that's a big part of art, is just sharing it with others. And so, Exploring that dimension, but then also exploring, okay, well, who would be the, hate to put it in this kind of business context, but the customer, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe just consumer. And now all that is, is who is going to consume this piece of content that I'm mm -hmm. creating? Mm -hmm. Or whether it's a blog post, a photograph, a video, a movie, whatever. You have to understand who that person is. You know, right. Is it someone that you intend to buy your art? Is it someone that you want to follow because you guys share the same ideas. So you have to explore like what what goal are you trying to achieve? And then once you understand that, you have to start thinking about well where are those people? Right. Right. And so, you know, one thing I've experienced is there's a wonderful community on Google Plus, especially for photographers, but it's a lot of photographers right. following a lot of other photographers. Exactly. But the experience on Facebook completely different. Mm -hmm. There you have people that are interested in the art and engaging about the mm -hmm. art. And I know those are general statements, but by exploring those a little bit more, you can start to target and find how to access, you know, some of those different But those you don't people. even know that part until you've done this personal exploration right. over and actually that process you're talking about can help you determine uh, whether you know, whether this combination of skill and passion and everything 
maybe it doesn't even need to make money. Maybe that's not exactly what we're, you, you determine whether, okay, well this combination is for my pleasure. Yeah. This combination, maybe with another layer added, that's how I'm gonna make money. And then I'll have fun over here. And then out of all that, you can determine, well, I'm gonna gear this one toward, you know, this social Absolutely. media, that one toward that social media. But with this as the hub, you can- a- Absolutely, and I think, you know, just to, I think you're doing a great job like bring it back into that into that realm of this uh, this hypothesis right and that is I think in this new world mm-hmm. having maybe an unconventional career is going to be the norm right yeah. and people artists in particular are going to find ways of bringing like you're saying many layers together to build a composite life Right, and in doing so, I think you can use a model like this to, to match up skill and in market, interest in market, uh-huh. interest in skill, and be able to start to find those intersections. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's a, a good way to look at it. How do people find more about something like this or find help with this or, like, where do you go <laughs> if you're just a person? Like, you know, I mean, if you work yeah. in a company that he worked in, you're lucky because you probably got a lot of this kind of help, but if you don't have that. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I think um, there, for me, a lot of the old standbys have been um, very helpful for me in terms of some of the frameworks. Um, one of the things that I do is I subscribe to a blog from Harvard Business Review. And what I like about that is that um, they have a very eclectic set of people, both professors, but also entrepreneurs and so forth, that are writing some of their best practices and then sharing them through, you know, this one channel. And I think that's a great, a great place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, I've also found quite a bit of information in terms of, you know, the networking, right? And so one of my other pieces of advice is that I think all of us, we spend so much time in our careers on that path that we sometimes put blinders on. Right. So it becomes a an echo chamber. Right. And we only see the things that we've self-selected for. And so, and this is where I think artists have an edge over people that have been in pure business jobs, mm-hmm. in that artists are employing more of that other part of the brain, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The more the creative side mm-hmm. and come in at a different angle and network outside of their norm. And they do that more frequently and I think doing that gives you this opportunity to gain to gain more insight I think I'm gonna sure calm that thing down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, getting kind of close to, to wrapping this up but but there's one piece of this which you're talking about um, artists are more used to being a little bit more I would say dimensional not quite as as uh, tunnel vision however I do find mostly artists sometimes not always but sometimes lack the ability to or just lack the awareness or the habit maybe of bringing in this kind of more of a business approach it's cross training i mean really i think sure. success living your life as an as if it were your art is about bringing in lots of elements cross training uh Wow, Absolutely. This this seemingly disparate in piece of information applied this way, boom, creates a whole different result. Well, I think the the core driver in all that mm-hmm. is curiosity. Yeah. If you have curiosity, then the world just looks different to you. And it doesn't matter whether you're an artist or in business. Mm-hmm. It's the curious that have these fulfilling lives. And the reason is, is that the curious will ask why. The curious will not be satisfied with a one word or one sentence answer. Okay. You know, especially somebody like me, it's important for me to know how things work. Maybe right. that might be more extreme for people. So to focus on curiosity, ask why. Um, think about contradictions. You know, if someone says that that direction is up, say, well, why isn't that direction up? Right. Very simple exercises like that can start to have, help you think differently and outside of that tunnel vision you were talking right. about. And I think, Karen, you're, you're living one of the best examples, which is um, when you have a notion of you want, what you want to do, mm-hmm. break it down into very concrete items. Right. Find real life models. Right. And then find an opportunity to do a project with a person because through that you create 
the skill. You create, you de determine whether your interest truly is there or not. Right. And you will then figure out if there's going to be a market or not. And you've done that, right, with your series. You've said, I'm interested in this. I, I have a passion around this. And I have a set of skills that lend itself. Mm -hmm. And you're able to start now pulling those things together. And yeah. you're, you're getting closer and closer to that center, which is living your life as an art. Right. Um, and so, again, finding people and projects to work on something real yeah. is what will turn it from abstract and thinking into doing. And that turns it into opportunity. Exactly. I could not have summed it up better myself. So this is the part right at the end for the last just <laughs> couple of minutes. He doesn't know what I'm going to ask oh him right now. He's like, oh God, here we go. So this is just like the random rapid fire okay. Yeah, questions. fire away. All right. What keeps you awake at night? Um, am I being the best parent I can be? Whew. Yeah. It does. I told my wife, the greatest accomplishment I will have will be raising these three kids. Yeah. Yeah. Full stop. That is really good. <laughs> what has given you more satisfaction than you ever imagined that it would? You know, I'll tell you, I think um, my discovering photography and rediscovering some of the creative side that I had, um, I didn't realize... I, well, this is longer than a word, but um, about two years ago, I actually said to my wife, I'm, I'm missing something. There is a vacancy um, and I'm not fulfilling it. And it was this creative part. It was pr creating something. I hadn't been creating anything anymore. Um, and so getting back into photography and the process of uh, getting out there, I love shooting landscape, getting out there in the world making a photograph, post-processing, even working on it in post, and then sharing it has been, I never dreamed it would be that satisfying. And it has been. That's awesome. <laughs> I found that to be true, too. Yeah, yeah. And I'm um, not just saying that for your benefit, either. It's yeah. true. And that's, that's how we got connected, right? Yeah, it yeah. is. It absolutely is. It's just expanded the world. Um, what one thing or quality could you, I'm deciding whether to ask it in the positive or the negative. So what one thing or quality could you live without in yourself? Would you be just fine <laughs> if you... Uh, my long wordedness. <laughs> I have no idea uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> brevity could be a better friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, you have it, folks, <laughs> from the, the well, soon you'll have that, because now art is back in your life. Yeah. Brevity will be there. It's all about cross-training. I, I think that's true. Boom. So, Peter Giordano, I cannot thank you enough. Oh, thanks, Ben. The pleasure's been mine. Thank wow. you. Wow. Really, really enlightening. And um, you can find Peter. Peter, you have a blog. Yep. You can go to petergiordano.com, or you can go to allthingsg.me. Really? <laughs> Yeah, which I thought was pretty Who funny. Who knew? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Or you can find me on Google Plus, yeah. um, and I'm on Facebook as well. Yeah, so, so. reach out, say yep. hey, and thank you for joining us out here on the deck uh, for this episode of The Chat with Karen Hutton. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>